You know it's been a day when I've got the emotional support oversized Carhartt hoodie on. It's nice and comforting and nice and oversized and just it's like I'm getting a nice big hug. <laughs> hey there friend and welcome back. My name is Sarah Rusk and oh my goodness the solar eclipse energy is doing me dirty. Whew! It has been keeping me on my toes and it's like, bless you. And it's like, you think you're nice and relaxed right now? Yes, again, we're going to bring up something else and we're going to challenge you in a whole other way. And I'm like, bring it, big dog. I can handle it because it's just contributing to my growth here. And it also makes for great content. So I had a lot of reminders of a lot of things from a lot of stuff in my past pop up today, literally. And I messaged a couple of friends of mine and I'm just like, seriously, the universe just has it out for me this week. It just it doesn't like me this week, which is totally fine because I don't have to leave my house tomorrow. And I'm super excited about that. I'm just going to sit here, edit pictures and probably watch the nanny all day. Uh, all speaking of which, I won this nanny mug on eBay because my addiction for this TV show is starting to get pretty bad. I love it so much. It's so funny. It's such a good, like, feel-good show for me. It's, oh, I love it so much. Anyway, so yesterday we talked about intentions. And today I want to ask you, friend, what intention did you set for your day? What did you set yesterday? What I love so much about setting intentions is the reminder of what it is that I'm working on overcoming. A big thing that has been coming up for me is my doer pattern and a pattern that I am not aware of that I am throwing. I'm sure someone could talk to me, have a full-blown conversation with me and be like, aha, that's your pattern. This is what it is that needs to be shifted within you. However, it takes <laughs> it kind of making a full circle in my noggin to then click and have all the synaptic connections do their thing, having my brain do its thing, what it's paid to do, to then be like, ah, oh my gosh, that's what the thing is. And then to keep catching myself when I go unconscious to it. I've caught myself doing a lot of things. I've overcome a lot of stuff. I've been with a lot of patterns within me, a lot of egoic stuff that has, you know, really <laughs> has has done me dirty too <laughs> in the past. Um, right now, the version that I am is something that I aspire to be like many, many, many versions of myself ago. Like if I looked at myself now compared to where I was a year ago, I'd be so happy where I'm at. But sitting in my shoes, I'm like, mm, you know, what? I could be so much better. So it's really funny because I'm the kind of person who usually people come to for support. I'm the person that people lean on. I'm the person that like if there's a problem, you call me, I'm there. Like I'm always like all in as a friend and everything. And for the past two years, that has not been me. I've been having a hard time showing up for myself, let alone for other people. And I start to get my favorite term now, crunchy and contracted contracted. I said contrasting yesterday. And when I was editing, I was like, I didn't mean that. I meant contracting. I've gotten very like contracting and very inward. It's just a big like in like this. That's kind of what it feels like sometimes. And I'm usually like, oh, please go away. I can't, I can't help you. I cannot help you because I cannot help myself. And I was talking to my good buddy, Jen Chase about it. And I said to her, I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like that. I'm like this. I used to just, I had a great personality I literally feel like the anti-Sarah. And she said she understands because for a year, give or take, she was going through something very similar. She just felt very like hopeless. And there's a lot of times where I've been feeling hopeless. As, as I said yesterday, like my intention for a long time was just to like make it through the day. Not because there's anything inherently bad going on in my life. I just was feeling so dark and just so awful that I, I couldn't see the forest through the trees. Like the stuff was like falling on me. It was awful. You know, I used to be such like a bubbly, optimistic person. And, you know, I've seen a lot of stuff. I've seen a lot of parts of me start to come up and watch as old parts of me die. And I am really wanting to be bigger, more expansive. And I know that with the contractions come expansion. You know, I've had a lot of personal experiences within my meditations where I feel my bar body where I feel my body start to like open up and it just like kind of it's like a stretch inward and then it comes out. And I think a lot about my life like that, too, with like the, the contractions that happen. You know, you think about pleasure, so to speak. Hear me out here. Um, 
I'm going to keep this as vague as possible. But when you think about, you know, stuff that we seek for pleasure, there is that like the contraction and expansion and contraction and expansion. And I feel like life has a tendency of doing that, too. Like right now I'm in a big contraction and things are just getting really like just not good and just meh. But then eventually when it starts to expand itself again, it's going to be this whole huge release of energy and it's just going to be more euphoric and blissful than I ever could have imagined you know there's the peaks and valleys that happen throughout life and but the frequencies you know things just get you know faster and faster and I'm watching and kind of taking note of from my timeline when things I have got the peaks and the valleys start to go up and I'm always journaling so I'm always keeping tabs on when I feel really good versus when I feel not so good this week was definitely a valley week for nothing more than I just wasn't feeling it you know I had a couple of big, like I said, challenges today. One of them, you know, again, with that whole support thing, me, I used to be the person that would be the person of support. And I'm now finding myself reaching out to other people being like, hey, I need your support, which is very hard for me. I'm not good at asking for help, especially because I've asked for help in the past and it just wasn't, it, it, I would get punished for asking for help or I wasn't able to receive it because as an empath, receiving is our greatest gift, as Kyle Cease says. But I am, you know, working on becoming a better receiver um, because there's a lot of guilt that goes along with it of like, ooh, I'm taking up space and I'm asking for things. So I had asked a friend yesterday for some help. There is an exercise that I really want to do where like they put their hand on my heart and I just kind of speak to them and get very vulnerable and just allow things to come up. And with this person in particular, like I really trust them. You know, we've been through a lot together and I just I literally trust her to like hold my heart and to hold a space for it. And I was kind of saying like, hey, like I really would like to do this sometime soon. And I had talked a couple of weeks back about it. And, you know, they were also going through some stuff this week as well. Work had been really crazy. And, you know, they had asked me earlier, uh, earlier on in the evening last night, like what it is I was going through. And I just said like what I've been going through. And I I didn't hear back from them until like the morning. And I started to just kind of get like very bummed out and like their response back to me was just very kind of like repeating back what I was saying. And I started to shut down and I started to take it personally. And I'm like, I would have answered this totally differently. And that's not the response that I wanted. So the way that I was feeling was coming from my ego and my head and not my heart you know, I'm very thankful that they gave me a response in general. <laughs> like, but it's really funny how. I could ask anybody to do any of the stuff. I can ask anybody to be there. I have so many friends. I'm so lucky and so thankful. I have so many people that I can turn to if I needed help to hold space for me. But, of course, in typical human fashion, egoic fashion, there's one person in particular that I want to hold the space. For. Bless you, Charlie. Oh, my God. I don't know if you can hear him sneezing. There's one person in particular that I want to hold space for me. And I honestly think it's because they sometimes aren't in the place to be able to hold that space like the thing that you want the most that you can't have like that's I I want that I want the one person that I can't have to have this kind of energetic experience with and I caught myself thinking that today I'm like oh okay we caught it so my intention for the day friend was to not take things personally and I don't necessarily have to change anything about it because I don't quite know if I have the tools to be able to make a lasting change. Um, I can start kind of trying to figure it out, which I have been, just to kind of make it feel better in my body so I could stop being offended by everything. If you want to know the amount of times, you, you seriously would laugh at me, friend, for the amount of times that like I either get offended or like I just start giving my energy away to other people and like just take things personally you would laugh you'd be like you are absolutely ridiculous sarah because unfortunately it's more times than i would like to admit <laughs> so my intention was to catch myself so i kept i kept catching myself today and i'm like i'm taking this personally literally when i was picking up horse poop this morning abigail pooped on a bunch of rocks and i was like you seriously you did this on purpose you did this on purpose you pooped specifically right here so you made it ten thousand times harder for me to do it and i literally had to stop and be like she is a horse she doesn't know where she shits. That's just where it is. Like, just calm down. You're fine. So I worked on overcoming big parts of myself, catching myself. And I said, okay, I understand that frustration's right there. I love you, frustration. Thank you so much for being here. You were needed at one point. I needed you to protect me at one point. We don't need this protection anymore. We don't have to be so offended by things anymore. And I just kept letting it come up. And, you know, 
it was hard in some points, but then I, I started to feel it was just like it literally was teeny tiny, but I started to feel a little bit of relief. And it got me through a big part in my day today. I'm a sports photographer and I had to go take pictures at a game today and it was pouring rain and a great team. I've been shooting for this team for a very long time. And there was some like challenges and resistance that I had with like kind of scheduling me to be out there and everything. And I caught myself feeling like such a bother to be there because I was taking up space. And like when everything's said and done, it's just a bunch of teenage boys just standing there. They're not going to remember who I am. Like no one remembers who I am. I'm just the weird chick with the camera that shows up every single year, but takes really rad pictures. And then they're like, oh, hey, it's you. And then sometimes they'll interact with me. But it's weird because, you know, I'm a girl and they're teenage boys and it's just like, ah, oh, my God. (laughs) And then I start to get into my head. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness, like I literally I'm here taking up space. What if I do something wrong? What if one of them gets really mad because I'm standing in a space and I'm like, you need to stop. You have to take up space. It's your job. You take pictures like if you want the good pictures, you have to move around. When I first started taking pictures, I literally would sit in the same spot for the entire game. And, you know, while I got pretty okay pictures, but I I only got one side of the game. So I have to force myself. It's so hard because I'm an introvert. But I have to force myself to move around and to take up space and get in people's ways. Like, I don't do it on purpose. And I hope that if I get into, like, the way of a parent or something, they say something. They're like, hey, would you mind moving? Because I would. Um, But I also have the intention for the fall of 2024 to start getting out to more teams and actually have, like, a solid business plan. Because I love what I do. I love taking pictures. I actually have got all my... Oh, Jesus. Oh, no. Oh, no. I love, I love, I love, hold on. There's a saying that um, a friend of mine says, I don't quite know what the actual phrase is because it's in a different language, but I have a theory and she has a theory and it's a tradition of hers, I guess, superstition, that when something breaks, it takes a hit for you. So I honestly had this poor little fox mug in a really bad place and it just took a hit for me so i don't know how that even happened but i was trying to show you my camera i honestly have no idea how that happened anyway that's the kind of day that's the kind of week that is that summed up my week right there thank god it wasn't (laughs) it wasn't the nanny mug that would have been really bad oh my god so friend we're not going to take it personally. I'm not taking that personally. I could have, I easily could have taken that personally. You witnessed it for yourself. <laughs> Literally, this has been my week. It's crazy. Uh, but it's all right. For me, this is just growth to just not take it personally. So, friend, super curious to know what your intentions are. My intentions for the next weekend or so is to just keep staying open, trying to be a little bit more heart-centered, not so much, or heart-focused, not so much in my head, and just really, like, changing my point of attraction. I've been listening to a lot of Abraham stuff recently, and I know that my point of attraction is not where I would like for it to be, because as you can see with the things breaking (laughs) and the chaotic energy that's currently around me, I really would like to refocus and change my point of attraction. So I know it's going to click and I know I'm going to start to feel that momentum and be getting into that kind of a vortex. And it starts with catching that belief or catching that energy that keeps just going on over and over again in my my little bubble that I've got going on. So friend, I hope that you're having a much better week than I am. (laughs) Please know that you are important and I'm so thankful and so happy to have you here. Your love and support is seriously greatly appreciated. I love interacting with you guys. It's so cool. It's so great. I love that I I get to start the day with you guys sometimes like that. That encourages me and inspires me to hop on here and share videos like this in, in the midst of chaos when I really would just like to hide under my covers and not come out for a week if I can help it. <laughs> love yourself. All the messy parts, all the dark parts, it's all a part of you, and it totally, totally deserves your love and attention. And no matter what, just promise me, you'll keep singing. Okay, friend? <laughs>